Hello, I'm Tony Radcliffe and welcome to Backtalk. Over the next 13 weeks, we're going to take you on a remarkable journey of discovery into the lives of some extraordinary people. Some call the disabled freaks and misfits. We're going to take you behind those stereotypes and show you the real people. Individuals who feel, fight and fornicate just like you and I. Cut. Hey, listen, mate, we're not going to catch anything, are we? We're not going to touch them. We'll just talk to them, all right? Come on. It's ten years now since Bob had his accident, and tragic and violent as it was, not only has he managed to survive it, he's come through remarkably well-adjusted. It must be hard now, ten years on. I mean, do you wish you never got involved? No, because I loved it. I mean, I was addicted. And if you want to be involved in these type of things, it just goes with the territory. But did you ever think it would be that dangerous? Sure, I mean, I, I knew there was a risk when I started, but people do risky things every day and don't get hurt. I was just unlucky. Do you back the calls since your accident to ban ballroom dancing? Nah, you can't. I mean, people love to rumba. You won't stop them. Just go underground. Some people I've interviewed have said that the hardship that they've experienced as a result of an injury like yours has so shaped them as an individual that without it they wouldn't be who they are. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I like who I am and I wouldn't be who I am if I hadn't have had the accident and experienced the things I had because of it. So no regrets? You wouldn't change a thing? No, nothing. Well, except, of course, for the accident bit. A quadriplegic doing karate may seem strange to some, but many people in Bob's situation are afraid to venture outside because of their vulnerabilities and the dangers they may face. Doing these classes has built Bob's confidence and self-esteem, and one day might even save his life. What we're going to see now is a bit of a role play. John, Bob Sensei, will act as an assailant, and Bob will repel him with a few moves he's been practicing. Okay, Bob, you ready? Okay. You okay? Yeah, yeah, well, obviously there's still a couple of things I've got to work on there. Look, I don't mean to sound harsh or to undermine your confidence, but it didn't really seem to me that you were able to defend yourself there. Well, sure, I, John's still got a couple of things on me, but I think you'd be surprised. I mean, I've been practicing a few moves lately that I think might work. Look, uh, give us your wallet. Put it on my lap. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah. Try and take it. <laughs> Help! Steve, somebody stop my wallet! Help! Oh no! I just. Dude, I smoked! Stop it! With there being increasing talk and optimism about finding a spinal cure, Bob knows that he must keep himself in the best shape possible so that when it happens, he will be ready to take advantage of it. So we're going to do Trikhanasana now, the triangle. Just tilting your body to one side, just trying to remain in one plane. The head and neck soft and relaxed. And as you inhale, coming back to centre, and exhale, relaxing the arms. So we'll do triangle variation now. So just twisting your body 
taking your hands into prayer position, bending your body forward, bringing your weight over your front leg. And as you next inhale, coming up, we're going to do a half lotus forward bend now, just the inhale. And as you next exhale, bending forward over the leg, softening the head and neck as you relax forward. And with every exhalation, just releasing any tension from your body. Is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, it's just... I can't get my hamstring into that position. Although Bob mainly earns his living painting greeting cards like these, whenever he can, he pursues his own unique painting style, focusing on his preferred subject matter. So up a little bit higher. That's it. A little bit towards you a little bit. Okay, perfect. Just hold that pose. Well, I don't know if I'd be classified as a conventional artist or not. I mean, at their core, my paintings are trying to get people to look outside the square. You know, because although I focus on the female figure, I'm trying to look past its natural fleshy forms in a kind of abstract, postmodern way. It's to get to the essence of who I'm painting, the individual. As you can imagine, with a job like mine, you meet some amazing people and see some extraordinary things. But none of them has come close to the effect Bob has had on me. One of the most profound and incredible things about my talks with him is the philosophies and insights he has developed on life, the universe, and our place in it, which I'm sure you'll agree are literally mind blowing. I know we've spoken about this before, but do you think you could outline once again for me your vision, as you call it? No, I'd rather not talk about it. Ah, oh, okay, yep. Um, cut. Well, unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to leave, Bob. A truly amazing individual. Although, if you can, I encourage you to catch his upcoming exhibition, Feminism in the 20th Century. Next week, we'll be speaking to Eric, the blind duck shooter, and document his struggle for acceptance and a hunting license. Ah, ah. Will you stop blowing that fucking whistle?